Ports aren't a problem for me, but it is for many other people, and I can see why this is the case, but I'll save this topic for another video in the near future. As stated on my Switch recap video, I mentioned that there was an issue with the lineup of games that Nintendo was releasing, an issue that is still ongoing with the releases of Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze and Hyrule Warriors Switch Edition coming out very soon, and that problem is ports of pre-existing games that were on the Wii U and being ported on over to the Switch. Before I do start talking about this, I want to first mention that I myself don't find a problem with ports. In all honesty, I think they're great, but a lot of people think otherwise, and that's why I want to discuss it in this video. Let's begin by talking about some of the complaints people have been making about the Switch ports, starting off with the argument that more ports have been releasing on the Switch than new first party and third party games, and that is somewhat true. If we take a look at the first Direct of 2018, most of the games announced were just a bunch of ports of games that Wii U players have probably played. As for 2017, I believe that the lineup cancelled its ports with its major new titles like Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey. But this issue really started becoming an issue in 2018 where most of the first party games have only been ports with the exception of Mario Tennis Aces, really the only first party new game that we're seeing this year so far. But really, the worst part of the port problem that Nintendo has is the pricing of these ports. Games like Bayonetta 1 and 2 don't fall into this category, but games like DK Tropical Freeze do, with the game being priced at 59.99 US dollars, rather than the 49.99 pricing the game launched in when it came out on the Wii U. And I believe this is the problem that most people have with this whole porting thing, and they have a good reason for it too especially if they previously purchased the game on the Wii U, but people have to understand that they aren't obligated to buy these games. These games are being ported over to the Switch because those games were missed on, because it was on a system that lacked sales. Not many people got to buy Mario Kart 8 or Bayonetta 2 because it was on the Wii U, a system that barely made it to 10 million sales on its fourth year, just think about it. People who didn't own Wii U's have an opportunity to own the game on their Switch, and the game being ported has another shot to make an actual profit for Nintendo. I would call it a win-win scenario, but really the only ones who lose are the Nintendo fans who have played the game, which ultimately sucks, but hey, that's business folks, what can I say? As far with the amount of ports we are getting, should Nintendo slow down the ports? To that I say no, they shouldn't. In fact, I believe that they really need to port games like Mario Maker onto the system, although it might be difficult since that game really utilized the gamepad. They can still somehow do it, but as you can see, so far this problem isn't much of a problem for many Switch owners besides the ones who already own the games. Heck, maybe there are Nintendo fans like me who don't mind double dipping for a game like Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, and that means that Nintendo will gain lots of profit from this, and most people see this as corporate gain, it can still possibly lead to good things, like maybe, I don't know, not making the fucking company die? And of course, not only that, but getting sequels to the games that are being ported. But, of course Nintendo isn't the only developers on the market, so let's move on to the third party ports. You see, third parties have really been porting a lot of their old pre-existing games that you can still get on some of the old or current gen hardware. Games like Payday 2, South Park The Fractured Butthole, Skyrim, and many more. Usually when we get an announcement from third parties, it's a port. Many people again see this as a problem, in fact, the same issue with Nintendo's porting like the whole pricing range of these ported games, like Skyrim being 60 bucks, yet you can get it cheaper everywhere else other than the Switch. But for the many same reasons that I gave for the Nintendo ports can be stated here, especially when this can benefit almost everyone, especially if you only had a Wii U and couldn't get a game like Rocket League or Doom. And speaking of Doom, games like Doom being ported to the Switch can help a system. Imagine how many previous Doom owners went and bought Doom for the Nintendo Switch, just for the portability. And this leads me to the next topic, which is quantity and quality. Games that Nintendo and some of these games that third parties re-release onto the Switch are usually really good games, and they are re-releasing these past older games in a lot of quantity. 
giving players the most important thing that a console can give, a large selection of choices that they can choose from. For example, let's say you really want to play a shooter on the Switch. Well, you're in luck. You have at least five games of the genre that you can choose from in the selection. You see, that's why it's important. Imagine if some of these ports weren't here. How many games from the shooter genre can you choose from? As you can see, ports aren't all that bad, allowing other players to play games that they couldn't play and giving us the consumers a choice of games that we can pick from. And thanks to the third party support of ports, we can see what the Switch is truly capable of and where it stands with the other consoles. But the final problem that I see when it comes to this port problem is how Nintendo is treating these ports like completely new games. Games that can quench everyone's thirst of a new Nintendo game or a third party game that they haven't played, when it really doesn't for some of us who have already played the game that they are porting and re-releasing. To be honest with all of you, that kind of bothers me too. I really believe Nintendo will stop porting games at least when this year ends. That's sort of my theory, but we'll see for now. We have to just deal with these ports and some of us might like that and some of us won't. But remember one thing, Nintendo is still pumping out greatness with Smash Switch coming out this year and Yoshi 2018 being due by this year. So yeah, I can wait and while I wait, I'll relive these great Wii U games that got unnoticed due to the system's care and lack of sales on the Nintendo Switch. But now it's your turn to tell me what you think about the entire port situation that people are calling at. Do you like ports, or do you really want them to slow it down when it comes to it? But I really think this is a good thing, for at least now. If they don't stop porting, then you'll see me again next year with the same damn video title, except more angry and possibly hoarding.